From the art of the deal to keeping it real. Keeping it real. Live from the Simply Vegas studios, it's The Power Move with John Gafford. The Power Move is back after our short Indiana Jones type hiatus. We're back. So jealous. Back again. But you should be jealous, Colt. Jealous you should be hard. jealous. <laughs> So if you have the first time tuning in, John Gafford, I am your host. With me to my left, Colt Amadon. What's going on, guys? And across from us, Chris Connell Esquire. Chris. How you doing, guys? Man, I'm doing great. Now, now. I guess is good. So, yeah, you know, i got to start with something. We'll start out with this. So the first thing I'm going to say is, we, we you guys even know this, but we crossed a, a pretty good milestone. Pretty decent. We now have 10,000 people plus subscribe listening to this. To this? To this. And not like not like the Indian clickbank fart farm or whatever it is. Where <laughs> is they that just, a good thing though? No, that's ten thousand people it's all squiggly lines. that might try to cancel us. Now I'm getting a little nervous, guys. You, now no. you should be you're about to get grooved and stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. no. Oh, why? <laughs> no, no, no. That? And, and I got and I gotta tell you, of the ten thousand people that are listening to us, there's actually some some decently qualified human beings, including my sister, uh, who has is very successful in not necessarily just this medium, but in uh, in radio in general. She's one of the top uh, top female talk radio hosts in the country. She's on iHeart in Denver, uh, does extremely well. And she called, and, and, and the first thing she tells me to congratulate me on, on how good the show is, is she just goes, Colt's a star. <laughs> Oh, so I, I don't know if it's a backhanded compliment by your sister, no. but do you know what she says to me? She goes, um, you say shit that I think, but I'd never say. <laughs> I'm like, is that good? I'm, no. Thank you. <laughs> no. no, I think it's exceptional. But, you know, it's, it's funny when we do this, and I listen back to some of the episodes, and, and some of them drift into the abyss. But I think, especially if you're just listening to this for the first time, you know, the goal here is to entertain you, obviously make you laugh. But we do drop a lot of actually good business knowledge that's going to help you in. Uh, if you have a business, if you have a job, if you're in sales, if you're trying to get better, that's the end goal of what we're doing here. Uh, you know, you, you, you talk about who we are. I own a very large real estate brokerage here in Las Vegas. We're completely vertically integrated. We own a very large mortgage company, title company, as well as mortgage and title companies across the country. Colt is one of the finest commercial real estate brokers I've ever met. He's been in the business forever, has forgotten more about that industry than anybody else. And I thought you were going to say I'm like the best uh, movie. No, no. Movie. Well, I mean, that, that's the bonus <laughs> we get. Greater critic. That's the bonus we get. And Chris Connell is an exceptional personal injury attorney. Um, so if you have a personal injury case, you know, call Chris. It's not, call Chris. 702 you know, Connell. 702 Connell. I like to think less billboard, more lawyer. That should be your, <laughs> yeah. that should that should totally be your thing. That should yeah. be your name. Less yeah. billboard, more lawyer. Like less it. billboard, more I lawyer. Like yeah. If your money is going towards buying billboards, maybe you should think about yeah. Yeah, maybe, where it's going. Maybe think about where it's going. Yeah. But... The reason that we're just back today is because obviously we were at, on, on a monster hiatus on our on our Indiana Jones adventure, and man, I got to tell you, it was uh, you know again if you didn't know what we were doing several months ago, Chris Chris Connell, for those of you who don't know, is is what we like to call a seeker. I am a seeker, an adventurer. They call me that, and they, they do they call you that, and and, and, I, and he goes on all these cool adventures and does all this cool stuff, and at one point I say, man, I, you know, I, I want to go do some cool stuff too. So he goes, all right, bro. Then the next thing that comes up, you can't say no. I'm like, what? All right, cool. So like a month and a half ago, six <laughs> weeks ago, he just essentially says, all right, time to go. You can't say no. I'm like, where are we going? Just say yes. Like I had to say yes, I think, before we actually even agreed as to what, what we were doing. Yeah, I didn't know where we were going. Smart was smart move. Yeah, smart move. Smart move. Strong move. Strong move. So I was like, yeah, let's go. And it turns out we went to Cairo, Egypt, where Chris had somehow worked it out with the Minister of Antiquities to, to do what, Chris? What do we do? To go on an actual archaeological dig in Saqqara, yeah. the tomb of Wahati. The tomb of Wahati. The tomb of Wahati, the recently discovered. You can see it on Netflix. And we got to actually hang out with the guys on Netflix. In, yeah. The the, net, the dudes that were in the Netflix video was who we were hanging out that's, with. That's who was showing us around Wahati's tomb. Uh, Tutankhamun's uh, wet nanny. nurses. The nanny, yeah. The nanny. And then, you know, um, because hopefully this doesn't go anywhere past this, we actually got to see, you know, freshly discovered. Um, mummies. Mummies. Uh, 60, a, a tomb. How? They're still tomb. looking for an entrance that yeah. they can't find yet. 
Yeah. And, you know, John in his supervisory role was there while <laughs> Chris was <laughs> swinging. Swing, yeah. Which was, yeah, Chris. The videos. Yeah. I, I sat there, no. I'm like, is John doing anything other than just no, look at Chris? No, no, okay, okay, okay. All right, real quick. Always okay, be real quick. Think back to the scene in Indiana Jones when they're about to discover the Well of Souls or wherever it is, right? Okay, there's a bunch of dudes digging. I see Indy standing around the sunset putting his hat on. He ain't digging. Wow. Look, that's, that's the labor. But speaking of Indy, we were dropped into yes. a hole on a rope. Yes. And, and it's not. See, and I would have gone. I told John, I'd have gone first. No, no. You no. second. Because I, what if he'd have loosened up the bolts? I don't even know if there were bolts. There, no, I, okay. This thing, no, you're no, telling no. me in 2000 or in 2021, <laughs> no, no, no. they couldn't get a better rig. You're, you're talking about five dudes on it. Oh yeah, lowering you down a sixty foot shaft foot on a bucket. rope with a foot in a basket. It wasn't a bucket. It was a woven basket. A woven basket. I, I watched that and I'm like, how did they not spend a thousand dollars and get the metal one? I mean, this thing. Honestly, I, I, I wish people would go back. As, if, if you've ever been to it. a third world country, yeah. <laughs> no, he hasn't. Just yeah. from that one statement alone, like, no. why did they not make the investment in in something better? He hasn't. Yeah, but, uh, I feel like somebody could have donated that. So, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyway, it was uh, it was unreal. It actually surpassed my expectations of it what did. I thought we were going to do. I thought we'd get to maybe throw around some shovels, right, pick up right. some pottery, be like, "Wow, this is four thousand five hundred years old." Yeah. And it was like, "Here, welcome to the site." Guys, the guys dusting off mummies that they've just discovered, <laughs> reading the hieroglyphics yeah. in live time. I was yeah, in real time. I was, was jealous crazy. that you guys were going, and then I saw your videos, and I was just like, "Wow!" Yeah, I'll tell like, you, I, I don't. It, it was crazy. I'll, I'll tell you this: you know, the Dubai part of it, the in and out Anthony Bourdain power Dubai thing. Yeah. So we get to Dubai. I don't even we told you this, Cole. We get to Dubai. And literally, it's Anthony Bourdain. We got 16 hours. We're like, let's bang it all out. So we're like just jumping on apps or whatever, trying to find places to go. The first bar we go to, best bar in Dubai, closed. Not open. <laughs> so then we're like, all right, let's 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 rip over to, you're going to love this part. So then, we, Trader then we walk over to Trader Vic's. We walk up. Guess what night it is? Latin night. What? Guess, <laughs> guess who's not hanging out for Latin night? These two guys. Wait. <laughs> we're like, oh, no, you guys no, no, missed no, no, out no. on the epic. Yeah. That probably no. would have surpassed the, the mummy. No. No, so we bail on we bail on Latin night, and then we're just like, okay, here's this bar, the red bar at the Moscow Hotel. Sounds cool. Let's go. Yeah, the red room at the, the Moscow. Red hotel. room at the Moscow Hotel. Yeah. We're like, cool, Russian hotel. Let's go. This is gonna be great, right? We get there, walk into a bar. There's 200 people in this bar. First of all, we get met at the door by Igor. Igor <laughs> and Igor. And, and, and Igor was, wants to get paid, and John's yeah. like, well, we're in. I, I guess we have to like tip the doorman. And he's like, it'll be you know, 100 bucks each or whatever. Yeah. And okay, so we go to pay him. And he's like, no, 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 pay the door. Yeah, no, no, no. You thought you, it was you like you pay a, with oh, credit really? card. You pay, you, you pay with credit cards. We felt like it was a shakedown. Like I, hey, you got to tip me to get in here. No, see, I feel like Igor's like a cool villain name. <laughs> I think it's like an Arabic Igor, but yeah. what, I don't know. I, who knows? Anyway, so so we get in and we go in this bar. There's 200 people in this bar. Very quickly, we realize the guy to girl ratio is a little off. <laughs> good off, is, good which off, is or always bad a off. sign that you're not, not probably, the <laughs> you're right probably place. not in the right place, right? So, we, we very quickly realize there's about 80 guys in there, yeah, probably 60 of which are, are uh, like, like Dubai guys, like Middle Eastern guys, 20 of which are Russian gangsters, oh, yeah, and 120 and 120 women that were all either Armenian or Russian prostitutes, <laughs> invariably. So, how out, out did <laughs> the rest Americans. of that go? Two Americans. <laughs> Well, well I mean, we had already paid for the drink. Yeah. The drink. So, <laughs> so he had to no, sit down no. and have your drink. So, so I'm like, I'm like, this is going to make. So I immediately ascertained a couple of things. Number one, it's kind of like uh, number one. I figure out this is why I process in my head very quickly. It's like number one, it's that weird across the room stare you get at strip clubs oh, yeah. when they're like looking at you, like they're going to come over and try to hit you for a table dance. So you're like looking at your shoes or your watch the whole time, trying to avoid that. Right. And then I very also quickly realized that at some point these Russian gangsters are going to hit us with the "Why well, you come in here? If yeah. you don't, you come in here to look at your shoes. Why are you here?" So very quickly, we're pounding these drinks down as quick as we can, assuming they were what they were supposed to be. <laughs> John's lesson from that was not only one. Now he knows how he would do in a. In a, in a prison shower situation. Yeah, terrible. Not good. Terrible. Eyes not down. Good. Yeah. Terrible. Eyes down. No eye don't contact. Look up. Eyes <laughs> no, down, no eye contact. The yeah. second thing is read TripAdvisor before you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because as soon as we walk out, we pull up TripAdvisor for this bar and it just says. And it really said that? A Great discotheque, bar. discotheque for prostitutes. That's, what That's it said. hilarious. Yeah. It, Do you it, guys it, remember before that bar what you guys did? Yeah, we walked out on Latin night. No, walked you guys called me. Oh, oh did right? we call you? Yeah, you guys called me. It was like midnight over there. 
it's noon. I'm having lunch with the client. And I get a call from these two, and I'm like, oh, shit, something's bad. This guy, it's like midnight, 1 o'clock. What's going on? They're calling me, hey, top five sandwiches, which I think we need to go over that in the second half of this because. I forgot we called asking yeah. for the top five sandwiches. I don't even know where that came from, but I love this list. So next, after this first segment, we can get into the top list five of sandwiches. top five no, sandwiches. No, I mean, Colt, why not now? What's your top five oh, sandwiches? Oh, my gosh. Well, number five, just that <laughs> classic country club uh, club. You know, that big three-decker. That thing's phenomenal. Can you ever eat a whole one of those? I don't think you can. Number four would just be a classic, like, meatball hoagie. That's number four. Three, a grilled Italian panini. That's number three. Number two, grilled cheese with a cup of <laughs> tomato, tomato soup. soup. We yeah, went over that. We got to hit that Number one, one is a chicken parm anything. Chicken Bagel parm. Man- Mania has a chicken parm. You'll appreciate this. Yeah. On top of a pretzel bagel. Oh, oh that's impressive. Gosh, that's Colt Top strong, 5. Strong. That's that's Bagel Colt Mania, five. if you want to give me a free drink than, for that. It's a lot so, better than so, your movies. So anyway, if, oh. you, if, if you just tuned in to hear Colt's Top five sandwiches. You can go and tune out now, but back to the Egypt trip, Colt, if that's okay with yeah, you. That's all right. I, I thought that was interesting. I thought I thought you guys were really held hostage, and I'm like, get my credit card out. Like, what, what's going on? No, you weren't. You were planning podcast guests. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, you thought the takeover yeah. was about to the be The power complete. move with Colt Amid in. Super nice. Here he comes. So, anyway, so we, we leave. Other than that, Dubai, we just kind of bounced around and, and, and sight saw, and we couldn't do anything we wanted to do. We went to the top of the Burj, actually midpoint of Burj Khalifa. It was way up there, but we did the midpoint of that. Um, we, we tried to go shark diving. They wouldn't let us do it because we had to fly. And then what else did we try to do? We tried to go skiing at the indoor mall. Yeah. And it was just we didn't have time. It, it, you know, to John's credit, everyone, if you want to travel with somebody that's actually about stuff, <laughs> yeah, call John, go with him. Because there's a lot of people in this world. You go places. They go, oh, well, can we go here first? I got it. And John's like, Hey, there's a ski hill indoors. We have 35 minutes. How much is it? Two hundred dollars each. Let's go. Well, Let's go. We're only here once. So we should probably go try to go skiing. Let's go. By the time we put our like you know booties on, we got to turn around. I think run. from the whole trip, the thing that I must have said more than anything else was when we'd be dead tired, hadn't slept like jet lag like crazy, three hours drinking one percent alcohol beer, whatever it was, oh, and I'm just ouch. like, I look at Connell, I just say, Connell. Right here, right here. <laughs> this is when our competition it's, quits. It's right this is when they quit. We're not going to quit. We're going to push through. This is when they would give up. Not us. Oh man, was it? Forward. Was Dubai pretty impressive? Amazing. It's impressive. It's, per- it's a first world. It's a first world situation with a lot of third world, you know, issues. sort of realities and, and attitudes. So um, the dark secret of Dubai is it's basically built on slave wages, slavery, yeah. like yeah. effective human slavery and trafficking goes through there. A lot of Pakistani and Indian, I think 50% of the people that live there are from the Indian subcontinent. And a lot of things, employers, there was allegations that they'd go and work and they wouldn't give them their passports until this, that, and the other. Oh, God. It's, wow. It's, it, it's got a dark history yeah. of how it's kind of like, it got made, kind of like the pyramids. Yeah. 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 So, oh, I mean, the building was amazing all the way up. But, I will, t- but I will tell you this. You know, we skipped over the mo- one of the most important parts, the flight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look. And, and we're going to talk about this. You know, this is going to segue out. We're going to bounce in and out because I do want to talk about, about something real quick. This is going to jump in, which is crisis management in business. If you're listening to this, we're going to jump into this because this is a good point. Because when we flew over to Emirates, we flew there on Emirates. And man, that business class, I, I would rather do a 15-hour flight on Emirates business class. And a two-hour on Spirit. Than a two-hour on Spirit, any day of the week. It was, I mean, there's a bar in the back. You can walk up and just hang around the bar like you're at a bar. Absolutely. Uh, it was crazy the food was amazing and it was just uh, i mean honestly and and the wine list was amazing we, we i don't even remember like we were pounding wine in the emirates lounge in la okay <laughs> just pound it, it. that's the other thing too right you get the use of lounges yeah it made the travel it makes the travel experience so much better how much how often do you travel in a year a big trip like that once mm-hmm. and uh, people they kind of skimp on maybe that part of the experience to no. I'd rather have a crappier hotel and a nicer flight. Well, you no. Well, I was going to say you can't though because you realize that the time you were there a little longer than I was. But the time that I was gone, thirty three percent of the time that I was there, I was traveling to either get there or come back. Right over a seven day period. Right. That's a lot of travel. But that brings me to this point about crisis management because there's a little crisis this weekend in uh, with Southwest, <clears throat> and I was directly affected by that. Oh. 
And so if you didn't hear, I, you look, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was a planned walkout amongst the, amongst the pilots. I don't know if it was Southwest um, doing something internally. I don't know what it was. It was but, the weather. No, it was not the weather. <laughs> but whatever it was, it was handled incredibly poorly. For Horrible. I mean, thousands of Southwest flights got canceled. Uh, this weekend, we took our kids back down to Anaheim. Yes, I went to Disneyland again against my better judgment, but it was for a trick-or-treat thing, so it was limited people in there, and it was actually very, very nice. Um, but when we flew down there, we're on the plane going down there, and a lady that was, you know, some older lady was sitting next to my wife, and, you know, she was like, I'm trying to get to Florida. They keep canceling my flights. And the flight attendant was like, yeah, the weather's been very bad. It's been very bad. And the lady's like, looks at my wife. She goes, that's fake news. Yeah. And we immediately thought, this lady's off a rocker. Right. Like, fake news about the weather. Yeah. Turns out it was fake yeah. news. Yeah. Yeah. Because they were just making this stuff up about everything. So anyway, we, we, we go down there so much to Orange County that I didn't, I just could, didn't have it in me to drive again. So I'm like, let's, here's what we're going to start doing. Fly, drive, fly, drive. We'll, we'll go back and forth. Tickets are dirt cheap to get back and forth. Sure. So we get down to Orange County, we do our thing. Last day, which is yesterday, we're coming back. And I'm looking at the flights, and it get, got delayed. Right? I'm like, mm, not feeling good about this. Mm. And then we're there a little bit later. It got delayed a little later. I said, babe, this Southwest flight's going to get canceled. For sure, this is done. So I'm like, let's, let's get ahead of this. So we went ahead and we canceled the Southwest flight. We killed that one. And then as soon as we killed that one, we turned around and booked against, again, my better judgment, we booked Spirit because they had a flight. I'm like, ha ha, I win. <sighs> right, not, not so, much. <laughs> so anyway, Spirit starts pushing our flight just because, I mean, they're just Spirit. That's just what they that, do. That, that's yeah. not any outages. That no, 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 no. That's, that's planned Tuesday. obsolescence. Yeah, that's, yeah. Just, that's just what they do. So we end up having to rent a car last night at like not 10 really. o'clock to drive back from Orange County because my kid's at school today. But that is probably... The Best move ever. I sat there. I lost power last night watching these planes seriously it moving a hundred yards in the air. Oh, I'm like, dude. they were, and you would just see them keep circling, yeah. trying to make that. Yeah. It was a crazy wind. It was, it was, it was humming. Even driving the RAV4, which was we had the four banger just wound, wound out on the way back. Three and a half hours back from, from SNA wow. to here, which is pretty, pretty good. Impressive. Um, yeah, but my thing was this like, look, dude, one of two things happened. Either the pilots knew they were going to do this or Southwest knew this was coming. Sure. Either way, you have got to warn your customer base that there's going to be a problem. You can't be surprised this happened. I mean, I understand because here's the deal now. If it was the pilots, I'm mad at the pilots, but right. to punish the pilots because I can no longer count on Southwest because they, they knew this was coming. Either the pilots knew or the company knew. They didn't tell me. So now... I'm going to take my money elsewhere and hopefully Southwest loses money and puts the pilots out of business anyway. Right? So, so Southwest is, is a garbage airline. It is possibly my least favorite airline to fly. My yeah. wife loves it. People love it. But there's this thing. They did such a good job in the beginning of developing a good reputation for customer service that it still lingers because airlines are so traditionally bad yeah. at, at providing customer service, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, if you're not on an elite, you know, if you're not on Etihad or Emirates or something that has a, reputation to maintain, they really couldn't care less, Yeah. right? So Southwest had developed this lingering reputation. You always hear that it takes a moment to ruin a reputation, but it doesn't in airlines for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know how Allegiant's still in business, okay? <laughs> Spirit's still in business, because people- Well, if I'm Allegiant today, I, I am literally chopping it. I'm chop, you, licking I my mean, chops today. If you, yeah, but so management of those companies got so lean, they tried to make everything cost-effective, cost-effective, cost-cutting, mm -hmm. cost-cutting, to be, it's a profit-driven center, right? Mm -hmm. So Southwest um, was riding on that reputation for a long time, right. but it's gone now. Yeah. They failed themselves. Herb Keller yeah. had that as one of his driving principles of customer service, and the airline back then did uh, it focused on that. Mm -hmm. When's the last time you got on a Spirit airline flight where they actually did any of those things they used to do that were customer service oriented? Uh, it's, it's been years. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, and can't remember doing anything. When Southwest <laughs> also, the last crash and then the oil crisis and everything, they bought their gas out for so yeah. many years. They were able to do $49 flights, which just kept them alive. But, you know, I, there's no way in hell that it did not get leaked, leaked to the upper management that this was going on. Oh, there's, there's no, no way. way there's no they, way. They, they people are like, they were shocked. They didn't know. There's no. absolutely, there's out of thousands of pilots, there's going to be that one. Hey, 
Just FYI, this yeah. is going down. Zero so chance. Remember, save me in your grace. But that you, was way too organized of an event oh, yeah. for but them you, not to know about but it. But to your point, John, it's a great point. <clears throat> Nobody, when I was waiting for my flight back, because I had a similar thing, I flew back a couple days later than John mm -hmm. and spent another night in Dubai. Um, but I flew back on a Southwest flight from Los Angeles here, and my plane was delayed. It was my 21st hour of flying that oh, day, God. and it was delayed and delayed, but it was delayed like an hour or something. Yeah. Right? Um, but that's it, I, and it's fine. I don't care. I'm not a fussy flyer, and yeah. I put up with time delays. But why not communicate? They not yeah. a single moment were mm -hmm. they ever saying, "Hey, um, you know, we're experiencing issues right now. There have been delays. I'll try to keep you updated." But this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. This is the information I have. At no point did they do that. They just let us line up and sit there, sit there. delayed. For an hour, well, we're standing there it, waiting to board, and everybody's like, "What the hell is going on?" Well, listen, it, you know, right now we are in the midst of a global supply chain issue, right? Right, which mm -hmm. is affecting pretty much if you're in any type of a business somewhere, somehow you're feeling that. Yeah, you know, right now I have a situation here at the company, <clears throat> and again, back to how to deal with crisis, where we have one of our buildings uh, next door, the ACs are just tanked. They're just cooked. Thank God it happened today and not in June yeah, when it's there. It's going to take 10 weeks to get the ACs. It's going to cost 20 grand to fix them or to replace them. I got to spend 20,000 bucks to replace these things in 10 weeks. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is the people that have to work in that building every day. Right. So I've been walking over there every single day telling these people, and keep in mind, this is a real estate company. The agents are choosing to work with us. They're not employees. They're independent contractors. They can take their license anywhere they want. They choose to work with us. So I'm over there every day saying, guys, here's where we are. Right. Right? Like, here's, here's the bids. Let me show you this. I am doing everything I personally can right. to get this done. <clears throat> Literally, if it gets hot again, I will break one of the windows out. We'll put a wall unit in it. Right. Like, I don't even yeah. care. I'm going to do whatever we can to make it done. But I'm communicating the issue in a way that makes sense back. I'm not throwing my hands up going, sorry, guys, COVID, yeah. it's just taking too long. COVID. I'm like, here's a global supply problem. Here's how this works. He's come from China. They have to get on a boat. There's a backup at Long Beach that goes all the way down to Newport it's Beach for crazy. the port. They can't get stuff off the boats. It's a 10-week backup to get the units. This is where we are. So it, I'm just not, sorry, you know, well, I'm just not what, doing that. You look at Southwest, I mean, especially on a Sunday, NFL Sunday, People don't realize there are a lot of people that travel for these games. Sure. And mm -hmm. so not only are they pissed because maybe it costs them a couple hundred bucks that they'll get back, but no, they, they missed out on selling their tickets for six, seven hundred to a thousand dollars. If you'd have told them 12 hours ago, Hey, this is going to happen. Okay. They could either a find a different airline or B sell their tickets. Like you're better off of just being upfront and honest. I always tell people, you will not know if there's a problem unless it's a problem I know is going to be an issue. Yeah. If that can't be fixed. And if you know you're having a walkout, there's no way in hell you're fixing that in 24 yeah. hours. Then you tell people. Well, let's say, not, not let's say they didn't know. <laughs> no, let's there's say no there's no way. There's no possible? way. Give them the, give, suspend disbelief. All right. Suspend disbelief. Let's say they didn't know. Mm. Just Don't come up sake. with the weather. At the end of the day, come up, tell me after what's happening. Why yeah. the fuck is this happening? Yeah. Yeah, even if you didn't know, right? The, the weather the weather was a pretty piss poor experience. Well, I Especially mean, it when windy. it was it was windy. No, nah, it was beautiful <laughs> weather except for like maybe 0.5% of the country. Yeah, you they cannot were blame to you can't blame that when all your hubs it's all not, beautiful not, not when Delta's yeah. showing up and yeah, United's come rolling in. And, everybody's at point point the, or 2% of, you know, flights canceled and you're at what? 30? Yeah, I just you know again Moral story is communication is the key to your customers and treat your customers like you might actually lose them. And, right. and so many people right now are just not doing that. I mean, for example, I, you know, and again, guys, this is not, I don't want you to think that our podcast is designed for me to just sit here and just complain about businesses because it's not, except for you, Chili's, <laughs> you, Chili's, Salt Lake City. I will always complain about you and your suck ass service. But anyway, um, no, the, the point, like I go through McDonald's the other day, right? <clears throat> and I have an imaginary blacklist where if you just completely, if you do me wrong or, you know, cause I learn from my mistakes. If I touch the stove and it's hot, I'm not going to touch it again. Right. So the McDonald's right down here, right down for the business. I'm not a huge McDonald's person, but my kid kicked ass at lacrosse practice the other day. He's like, I want McDonald's, buddy. You earned it. Whatever, whatever you want. Daddy's got you covered. There's a time and a place for McDonald's time and a place. Right. We're going to get to that too. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Disneyland anyway. So we go through McDonald's drive through and it's one of those ones. Now they have a double lane one where you're trapped. Right. 
I got you. Trapped. So now I'm trapped. From the time I got in that line to the point where I could not get out, it was 45 minutes until I got my food. From the time I ordered my food at the little at the little thing to the time I got four cards ahead to pick it up was 17 minutes. So me, having history in the restaurant business, I called the manager out and I said, hey, 17-minute um, ticket time is the drive through dude? Right. He goes, yeah, we only got six people. And I'm like just throwing it out there, why don't you close one of these lanes yeah. where only so many people can get through so me as a consumer can look at it and go, oh, the line's too long, we're not gonna go there. Right. Save 45 minutes of my life rather than trapping me and having me furious and never wanted to come back. And his response was, they won't let me do that. Right. And I said, who's they? And he goes, Corporate. they. Yeah. <clears throat> and I said, okay. Well, you know why? Those are designed to keep you in. To trap you. They're designed to trap you. Yeah. They have more funnel. Lane. If you notice, why do you need to? It's not the parking. They actually had to negotiate that and pay higher in their lease for that. Yeah. Right? How many yeah. parking spots did they have to give up? You know they when you develop. Yeah. No. How see, many parking space, spaces yeah. are at a premium in, in yeah. malls? But you but you do that. But you look at this way. So you go to restaurants, though, and you see a bunch of tables that are open. You're like, can I get a table before? They're like, it'll be 15 minutes. Yeah. It's because they don't have the staff to take care of you. Right. Everybody's short staff right now. Right. Everybody is. So if you are in a business... Only, you know, again, crisis management. If you're short staffed, only taking the amount of customers you can actually serve at a high level. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't bring in a bunch of people, piss them off. Right. It doesn't make any sense to do it that way. If you are having a crisis, a supply chain, you can't get your product, you can't get something people need. You need to be honest with them. You need to tell them what's going on and you need to let them know it's going to be a problem before it's a problem. Because for example, Chris, if you need widgets to run your business and I sell widgets, and my widgets happen to be tied up. If I tell you, hey, look, here's the deal. My widgets are tied up on a thing. I need you to find another widget supplier for the next month. But when I come back and I get my widgets, I'm going to give you a great deal and, and get your business back. Right. I have taken care of you as a customer. I'm risking losing you. Sure. But if I you run out of widgets and you can't do your business, I'm guaranteed I'm going to lose you. Yes. Yep. yep. So that's, that's what I have to say about widgets, and that's what I have to say about that. But I will say this as we jump all over the place <laughs> today. <laughs> You know, I'm going I'm to save that for, for episode two. Let's, let's wrap up Egypt. We got about four minutes left for this, but I will say this. All the stuff we saw in Egypt, and there was a lot we saw, is primarily one thing. And here's what I learned. <laughs> Number one, <laughs> let's talk about the, the, your takeaways. Number one, driving was insane. Oh, you, There's three million people, four traffic lights, and... <laughs> there's 21 million people. Oh, I'm sorry, 21 million people. There's literally four it's traffic lights. It's the population lights. of New York yeah. in a city with no traffic lights. Really? So yes. Think about that. And, and survival. It, you learn to survive. It's spawning upstream. Salmon. Yeah, it is. It's what it looks like. It looks like salmon spawning upstream. And like at one point, a guy came flying by us on a motorcycle. Heisman like a, like straight, a straight up, A straight up Honda <laughs> with a probably four-year-old in the front, his wife behind him, carrying a baby like the Heisman football trophy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And like babies we hanging out. We saw a kid get hit. We saw a kid get hit. He was, he was off on the side with the bloody face and all this stuff. And people were just like, get that, get, like, get, get, out, out, get off the road. Your fault. Yeah. That was your fault for yeah. being and, in and, the road. And we, we asked our handler guy, we said, dude, you know, because all the cars are just banged up. Everybody's just got bang fenders and bang tents. And I said, do you guys even stop if there's a wreck? He's like, excuse me, we are not uncivilized. Of course we stop. We stop and we fight. Fight. We punch each other. Yeah, and he goes, and then someone that sees it says, "No, it was this man's fault." And he goes, and then we decide how much it cost, and, and then we pay, pay each other. Right and pay him right there. Pay him. We're done. Really. So shout yeah. out to Hussein. By shout the way. out to Hussein. Amazing. I'll put a link to him in the bio here for what, what you want to yeah, see. If Hussein, you wanna, if you want to go to Egypt, that's your guy. You, I was talking to JJ, the guy that helped us set up this mm -hmm. trip up, and we can deal with that later about you know yeah, the, yeah. that kind of situation. But um, he goes, "I need a Hussein everywhere." Yeah, no like kidding. You need a Hussein sometimes. Everybody needs a, everybody needs a Hussein. Our man yeah. in Egypt was great. So the, the traffic was incredible. The level of abject poverty in that country. Um, remarkable. You know, remarkable. Yeah. And the fact that those people are just are living and existing in that level of, of, po of poverty. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's bad. And, and the point being is when I saw that, I immediately really thought, <clears throat> if you are lucky enough to live in this great country that we live in, I don't care if you're dumb enough to put, you know, <clears throat> you, know you can argue with the politicians all you want. Right. You can you can hate on you can do what you want. If you are God lucky enough to live in this country, you have absolutely nothing to complain about. Yeah. You, know? you won't realize that though until until you see how bad it is for the majority mm -hmm. of human beings. Yeah. yeah. I mean like the you fact wanna, that we can chew our eyes. 
no. drink our water. <laughs> well, that was a whole other thing, but no. no but like simple, no. simplistic, no, 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 simple buddy. stuff. No, 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 no. Not having your having genitals water. mutilated if you're a woman. Yeah. Yeah. 87.5% of, of Egyptian women have had their genitals mutilated. It, I mean, you, you, it's easy to complain about, you know, I only have the iPhone 11 right. or whatever. It's easy <laughs> right, to right. complain about. And that's like I said about travel. I've never met a well-traveled racist. Yeah. I've never met somebody who's traveled that doesn't realize. How, well, here's the one caveat to that, John. You go to Dubai Airport, then you go to Cairo Airport, <laughs> then you land in LAX and that piece of shit. <laughs> you go, <laughs> where am I? Where am yeah, I? LAX I is I a dive, yeah. Deceiving, yeah, third world country. <laughs> but no, e Egypt is a remarkable, fascinating place full of treasures from a, a foreign, a, an ancient civilization. Yeah. Thousands of years ago, they were doing things that were beyond remarkable. It's not yeah. aliens. No. They have literally you you go the glyphs. John, yeah. You see how they did stuff over time. They have the evolution of pyramids there. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't somebody dropping one down like that's the dumbest yeah. thing you've ever yeah. heard once you go see it. But to to the point about poverty and about appreciating what you do have, there's nothing more you should invest in than a trip to a third world country and really go see it because a lot of those people are very happy anyway. Yeah, they they're, they're not they're oblivious. living their lives. They oblivious. Are, they're just and they don't need your sympathy. They nope. don't need your whatever. Well, it's, it's just like it's, you don't realize yeah, how little you need. You need yeah. Yeah. Right? You don't need a lot. You yeah. want a lot. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's you want what, what you want. Like my wife grew up super poor. Right. Super poor. Like uh, crazy poor for American standards, not that, right? But she goes, everybody else was super poor around us. Like yeah. you don't yeah. know any better at that right. point. And, and like I said, people confuse wants and needs right. all the time. Yeah, and in and, and this concept that people the like the government should pay for, you know, oh, my, they should pay for my student debt. Dude, be happy you got to go to school. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about college. I'm talking about, like, elementary school. Right. It's, well, it's just a like clean without, you know what I mean? You, you go to other places, too, in India, and you see people amputated. You see, like, there's all of these issues that we don't face, right? You're yeah. so cocooned from the reality of how this planet actually works Yeah. in a lot oh, of ways. Yeah. Now, there's other countries that do things well, and I'm not saying be complacent, right? You can always improve. You should always want to improve your system. But, I, you know, the thing I love the most about Hussein was, we talked about this, was Hussein believes in his country. He loves his country. This is a guy that's a, a little bit short of a PhD in Egyptology. Super bright guy. And obviously very much care. Like, he has, he's had opportunities to go to London and work there and do his thing there. And he doesn't want to leave his country. He Comes believes back. in his country, um, which I love about him. So let's take a quick break. We're going to pick up more about Egypt. We're also going to talk about a couple things, including – just all kinds of stuff. You know, I, I want to talk about parents' responsibility in the weight of their children because oh, obviously wow. I was at Disneyland this weekend and uh, yeah, let's talk about that. Hey, it's John Gafford. If you want to catch up more and see what we're doing, you can always go to thejohngafford.com where we'll share any links that we've, things we talked about on the show 